Another great show on tap for today's San Francisco 49ers report. Appreciate all of you for being here with us. And an announcement from the NFL yesterday as training camp dates are official. San Francisco 49ers rookies will report to the SAP Performance Center in Santa Clara on July 18th. And then the veterans will report to training camp on July 25th. That means that we're finally going to be able to talk about some actual football here as the San Francisco 49ers are on that quest for six looking for another Lombardi trophy. And if you're pumped up for training camp to start, I need you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. Don't forget to subscribe as well because our coverage is going to continue to be fantastic on all things Niners all throughout the calendar year. Welcome into today's San Francisco 49ers report. I'm Chase Senior. No matter where you are, how you're tuned in, as always, thank you for watching the program. It's all presented by Kanzuri. You can get 15% off of their height boosting shoes at Kanzuri.com slash chat. We appreciate them for making today's show possible. And if you don't know about Kanzuri, let's tell you more about today's presenting sponsor because, fellas, if you're tired of being short, then Kanzuri is your answer. Have you ever wished that you were a little bit taller? Maybe you matched on Tinder, but her profile says, must be over six foot. And then you're like, shoot, that's not me. No longer the case with Kanzuri. Maybe your date wants to wear heels, but she can't because it'll make her, make her taller than you. Well, I got the short kings covered with Kanzuri. They make shoes that make you up to 2.8 inches taller without anyone knowing. Look, you think about it, right? Girls get heels, makeup, push-up bras, why can't men get a confidence boost as well? We're all the same height lying down anyway, if you know what I mean. Kanzuri shoes, not only height boosting, but also very stylish and comfortable as we're showing you. They have sneakers, dress shoes, and more. They're not grandpa's Velcro shoes, but instead very fashionable shoes that can receive compliments even without the height increase. And those height insoles integrated into the shoes making it the ultimate height hack. For a limited time only, a great deal for the faithful. The site is already 30% off. And if you use our link, Kanzuri.com slash chat, you get an extra 15% off just by using our exclusive link. In total, 45% off your entire order. Support our show. Check them out. C-O-N-Z-U-R-I.com slash chat. We'll put that link in the comment section and in the description of this video. So on today's show, I want to talk about Trey Lance here. And what do you know? We continue to talk about the quarterbacks on this football team. It's almost like it's the most important position in all of sports. And we're going to follow the paper trail here because multiple NFL insiders over the last few weeks have all said that Trey Lance could be quarterback number three with Brock Purdy as the starter, Sam Darnold as the backup, and Trey Lance as the third stringer. And if Brock Purdy isn't able to start week one on the road against the Pittsburgh Steelers, it will be Sam Darnold getting the nod. Now, there are multiple ways to look at this. Albert Breer, Adam Schefter, Ian Rappaport, they are national reporters. And of course, when you're a national reporter, you're not as plugged in as some local beat guys, but they're among some of the most trusted reporters covering the National Football League. So with what they're saying, do we have to take it somewhat seriously? We're going to unpack all of that on today's show, so continue to hang out with us. Can we just discredit their opinions and reporting, or is somebody within the organization giving them some information? We're going to put on our journalist caps here, and we're going to go deep dive investigation on today's 49ers report. Let's investigate the insiders. Adam Schefter of ESPN, Ian Rappaport of NFL Network, and Albert Breer of Sports Illustrated. Let's go through everything that they've said and comb through it all, and then we will form our own conclusions after we do our investigation. Let's embark on it. Adam Schefter on Trey Lance a couple of weeks ago. We'll see how Sam Darnold and Trey Lance do in camp this summer. My guess would be Darnold has a chance to really shine and excel. But there's a lot of preseason football left for those two guys to distinguish himself. Look, Brock Purdy is the one, if healthy. And I think going into camp, Sam Darnold, I think, has the edge going into camp. 
They know, this from Albert Breer now, the Niners know how good they are as a football team. They know the window that they're in. They know they've got one of the most talented rosters in football. And so at this point, they don't really feel like they can throw a season overboard in the name of Trey Lance's development. More from Breer. You're not talking about developing the best quarterback for the playoffs. You're talking about the guy who can keep the best team afloat for a month, right? That would probably be Sam Darnold over Trey Lance at this point, even if Lance has the higher ceiling. So, so far, Adam Schefter, Albert Breer, saying that Sam Darnold ahead of Trey Lance in the pecking order. How about Ian Rappaport? This stole some headlines, too, back a few weeks ago as well. We do not know what Trey Lance is going to be if he continues the trajectory that he's been on. And I think certainly it seems Sam Darnold will more likely than not be the starter going into the season, of course, if Brock Purdy is injured. But there is an opportunity for someone to step in there and start the first couple of games of the regular season for the San Francisco 49ers. So there you go. All reports, all opinions, all snippets from what those three NFL insiders had to say. So once again, we put on our journalist glasses, and I ask you, what do you think about this? Do you trust them, or is it beef for baloney? Let me know. So there's also this, right? All three of those guys could be sharing their own opinions, and they could be sharing their opinions about the 49ers quarterback situation. But this is also interesting here, because I'm not going to peg Mark Schlereth as an NFL insider. He's a former offensive lineman, won Super Bowls with the Denver Broncos, and now he's a color commentator for Fox Sports. He called the 49ers Week 2 game against the Seattle Seahawks last year. That was the same game when Trey Lance got injured. And he said on the Colin Cowherd program, he thinks the Niners thought that Trey Lance was going to be a better athlete. So the Niners did not get the athlete they thought they were getting coming out of North Dakota State. And because of that, not only have the 49ers been a little bit discouraged by that, they've had to change their offensive system, their offensive play calling, and their offensive scheme a little bit. Because Trey Lance is not a quarterback like Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, sometimes even Josh Allen, who gets out to the perimeter on some of those read options. And maybe the Niners were envisioning calling some of those plays for Lance, but they saw the lack of speed, and they saw that he is more of a straight-line runner, which is why Kyle Shanahan has been forced to call more of the power runs and some of the inside power runs. One of those inside power runs, the play that Trey Lance got injured on last year when he ran in between the tackles. This from Schlereth is somewhat interesting for a couple of reasons. He has a Shanahan family connection. Did I say he played for the Denver Broncos and won Super Bowls with Denver? Yes. Who was the head coach of Denver at that time? It was Mike Shanahan. And a little inside baseball here. When game callers, play-by-play -play guys, or color commentators do a broadcast, prior to that broadcast, usually in the days leading up to that game taking place, like let's say Sunday, like that week two game between San Francisco and Seattle, those broadcasters will meet with coaches, they'll meet with players, and sometimes front office executives will be in there as well. So in those meetings, it is totally possible and plausible that Mark Schlereth was talking about Trey Lance. At that time, hey Kyle, coming off that monsoon game, how do you think that Trey Lance played? We thought that he made a couple of nice plays, but we didn't get the athlete that we thought that we were getting, and that's why we had to run some of those inside powers against the Chicago Bears. Well, Kyle, why aren't you running some of those outside zone read option RPO types of plays? Yeah, I don't think he has that speed to get out to that perimeter. So for him to share that tidbit on the herd with Colin Cowherd is, of course, notable as well. Now, as you can see, on today's show, we did some new, different, creative content compared to what we've done in the past, added some comedic value in there as well, with our journalist glasses as well. How do you think I look? How do you like our new creative content? Do you like it? If you do, and you're a fan of some of the things that we've been doing and the movement that we've been on, it's the end of June. It's not a lot to talk about. It is the driest portion of the schedule when it comes to the NFL. Then I want you to type me 
if you think that we can improve, I want you to list how we can improve down in the comment section. We always appreciate your feedback, and you can also interact with me. You can tell me what you think about the show and some things that we can do differently on Twitter and Instagram at Chase underscore Senior. Some of you have asked for collaborations with some other 49ers YouTube content creators. That's a possibility. Game film and highlights a little bit tough because we don't want to get our channel shadow banned or taken down by the NFL, but feel free to have a conversation with me. Thanks for watching the show. Don't forget to subscribe. Sam, Fran, Cisco, we out. Thank you.